It's time to return. Return to one of the coolest gaming experiences you remember. Now even better. Hey everyone, it's Kylie at Games Unlimited. We've been waiting a long time, but we finally get to return to Dark Tower. This is a game, I'm not even gonna show you the box, I'm just gonna show you the tower because this is what people are excited about. It's in, it is now a fully co-op game. Restoration Games has worked their magic, made a game that we remember as being super cool and awesome, probably largely due to nostalgia, turned it into something that fits with modern gaming sensibilities and is an all-around awesome experience. But I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. Let's start by talking about the tower. Let me go ahead and turn this thing on. Get your classic sound effects. Now, the modern tower actually connects via Bluetooth to an app that's gonna control the tower and add a lot of interesting things to the game. Think about app-enabled games like Descent, Journeys in the Dark, um, things of that nature, where the app is going to help create replayability, create interesting scenarios for the game and control a lot of what the bad guys do. Now, I've already removed a couple seals from this tower. You can see there's four sides to the tower and they have these seals that can be taken off and the, the app will instruct you, it will light up certain parts of the tower, say, you gotta remove a seal, and that's bad. Because when you remove a seal, it might reveal a hole there, because I didn't talk about the top of the tower, is where you're gonna drop skulls. Whenever you're done with your turn, you drop a skull in the tower, it might fall out somewhere. Wherever it falls out, we're gonna add a skull to that area of the kingdom, or it might stay in the tower, only to come out later. Now, when you calibrate the tower, when you connect the tower, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Uh, so the app is looking for a tower. There we go. Now it's got to calibrate. So it's going to move all of the different levels of the tower inside. So hopefully you can see this happen. Now normally, uh-oh, it's getting ready. Normally you wouldn't see any of that because you'd have the seals on. I just took them off so you can see what happens. So what the tower is gonna to be doing, you're dropping skulls in at the end of each of your turn. This is fully co-op. So you're trying to defeat a big bad. The big bad lives inside the tower. So you're going to have to go through a quest. And these are all, there are different quests you can go through, different big bads. I wanna say there's six to eight different scenarios, six to eight different big bads. So a lot of different, setups that you can do, a lot of replayability, plus each game you're going to choose four monsters, four foes that are going to be out on the board. That also gives the game some replayability. So first you're going to have to achieve the quest. One of the quests is go into three specific dungeons and clear them out. Uh, one of the quests is you have to find four specific treasures that are going to be in the treasure card market. Uh, once you've done the quest, the big bad will come out and you're going to have to defeat that to win the game. You lose the game, I mentioned every, at the end of every turn you're going to drop a skull in the tower. If you don't have any skulls left to drop in the tower, that's game over. Or if a character gets too much corruption, that's game over. Or if the game goes six full game rounds without winning the game, you lose the game. So, on your turn, your character is going to be able to move around the map. It's this nice big round map with the tower sitting right in the middle. And you're going to be able to go to one of the buildings, those four different building types, take an action there. And you're going to be able to do one heroic action, which is cleansing skulls. So as those skulls come out, they'll be placed on buildings. And if a building ever needs it to have a fourth skull placed, it's destroyed, which is also going to cause corruption and limit your access to certain types of buildings. So you can take an action at that building, uh, you can cleanse the skulls on a building, you can battle one of the bad guys that's out there, uh, or you can go into a dungeon and do various quests that are going to pop up. The app's going to control all of that. It's that simple. Most turns, you know, just take a couple minutes to do, next player goes. But when you finish your turn, you end up dropping a skull into the tower and events might happen. Uh, it might be good things. So you're going to collect companions. Mm. Yes, it's angry. It wants me to play. Uh, you're going to collect companions, and the app might say, Hey, this companion can do this special cool thing. Do you want to teleport to a certain part of the map? Or do you want to raise more armies? Uh, it might uh, say, Hey, the tower, one of the seals is going to light up. You have to remove that seal. Which, of course, if you end up removing a seal that has skulls behind it, those skulls are going to spit out onto your kingdom. Of course, the tower may also start rotating. And when that happens, different sigils might face you. And when those are facing you, it costs you spirit, which is one of the resources in the game, in order to take that action. But of course, the most fun thing is sometimes the tower rotates and ends up spitting out skulls that were stuck in the tower all over the, all over the game board. 
it's just phenomenal. All the sound effects come from the tower. You can have them come from the app as well. You could hook it up to Bluetooth. But of course, the old school player of me wants all the sounds to come out of the tower. Game plays in about an hour and a half. I've already played half a dozen games of it. I love the different replayability. It is interesting that it, that it looks like it would be a dungeon crawl type game, like a Descent. It plays more like a traditional co-op, like Pandemic. I mentioned you lose the game because of the skulls and things like that. Each turn is going to be fairly swift. You're just going to do one, act, one or two actions on your turn, but it's a lot of coordinating amongst the other players. Who's going to go cleanse skulls? Who's going to wipe bad guys off the board? Who's going to start doing the thing that helps us actually progress towards winning the game? All in all, I was surprised. I... Honestly, I, I had high hopes because I know Restoration Games does a great job of bringing things back and, and making them modern and relevant, but I didn't expect to like this as much as I do. The art style is fantastic. That's Return to Dark Tower. If you have that nostalgia for Dark Tower, guarantee you, you are going to love this game. Come on down. We will have one set up so you can see it in all of its glory. I'm Kylie at Games Unlimited. Go home. Take a tower and unbox some fun.